Hello everyone, welcome to my next lesson on practical coastal navigation. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These navigation videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can take the place of accredited courses from qualified instructors and developing your own navigation skills over time. You are responsible for choosing destinations and cruising areas that are within your own level of experience and ability. Any charts you may see in this video are not for navigation purposes. They may be out of date and they are for explanation purposes only. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. In my previous navigation lessons, we learned that latitudes and longitudes define locations on the surface of the Earth and that directions are defined by degrees true, magnetic, and compass. Then we learned that marine charts use a projection called a Mercator projection that allows us to draw lines on a chart that are a constant direction from start to finish, so that we can follow one compass direction to get to our destination. So the next question is, how long is it going to take us to get where we're going so we can get there and get anchored with plenty of daylight left? This lesson is called 60D Street. Why is that? 60D Street is a memory aid to help us recall the formula for time and distance calculations. Now, personally, I don't use it, but I'll quickly describe it so you'll know what it means. Then I'll tell you what I think is my simpler way to remember the formula for time and distance calculations. Here's 60D Street. It means that 60 times the distance equals your speed times time. In this equation, we need the 60 because the speed is in nautical miles per hour and the time is in minutes. 60 D Street is just a nice little easy to remember address that reminds us of the basic time and distance formula. If it's easier for you to remember this approach, then that's fine, but you'll have to convert minutes to hours in minutes. Okay. So what's my personal way to remember the time-distance calculation formula? My way is just to remember what the definition of speed is. The definition of speed is miles per hour. That's something we can all relate to. When you're driving, you just look at your speedometer and it tells you your speed. In Canada, of course, it's in kilometers per hour. So speed equals miles per hour, and that's distance divided by time. That makes sense, right? If you travel 60 miles in 2 hours, for example, you're traveling at a speed of 30 miles an hour. This is the basic time and distance formula, and I always remember it just by remembering that speed is miles per hour. Now, in a marine environment, we use nautical miles per hour. A speed of 1 nautical mile per hour is the definition of a knot. Our knot meters give us our speed in knots, and our charts give us distances in nautical miles. And then, of course, time will be in hours and tenths of hours. To get hours and minutes, we have to multiply the tenths portion of an hour by 60 minutes. So let's do a sample calculation. And for this calculation, we'll ignore currents. Let's say our knot meter says we're going six knots, and our chart says we have 16 nautical miles to go. How long will it take us? So, for example, if you're traveling at 6 knots, then in one hour you'll travel 6 nautical miles. So then, how long will it take to go, for example, 16 nautical miles? In other words, how many times does 6 nautical miles go into 16? It goes 2.66 times. So it will take 2.66 hours to go 16 nautical miles at 6 knots. And decimal 66 hours is 40 minutes, so it will take 2 hours and 40 minutes.
A little algebra says that if speed equals distance divided by time, then time equals distance divided by speed. So we calculated a time of 2.66 hours by dividing the distance of 16 nautical miles by our speed of 6 knots. Another useful formula we can derive is that distance equals speed times time. That makes sense, too. If you're traveling at 6 knots, for example, for 2 hours, you'll travel 12 nautical miles. Most often we get our speed from our knot meter, so these are the two basic formulas to remember. And I always remember them just by recalling that speed is miles per hour, which is distance divided by time. The last wrinkle is that the time in these equations will be hours and decimal hours. So you need to multiply the decimal portion by 60 to get hours and minutes. For the intermediate cruising standard, we need to be able to calculate a revised ETA, or estimated time of arrival. So let's look at a complete example of that. This example is taken directly from my Intermediate Cruising Study Guide, available on my Patreon website. Suppose your destination is 11 nautical miles away, and you depart at 9 a.m., traveling at a speed of 5.8 knots. What is your estimated time of arrival at your destination? We use the formula time equals distance divided by speed. Or, in other words, how many times does 5.8 knots go into 11 nautical miles? It's about 1.9 hours, or 1 hour and 54 minutes. So your ETA is 9 a.m. plus 1 hour and 54 minutes, which equals 10.54 a.m. But suppose, after traveling for 30 minutes at 5.8 knots, you experience a favorable wind, and your speed increases to 7 knots. Now you have to determine a revised ETA. To calculate a revised ETA, we'll split the trip into two legs. The first leg is 30 minutes at 5.8 knots. So the distance you traveled is your speed of 5.8 knots times half an hour, which equals 2.9 nautical miles. So after 30 minutes, you still have 8.1 nautical miles left to go. Now we need to calculate the time to travel your second leg of 8.1 nautical miles at 7 knots. The time is your distance of 8.1 nautical miles divided by your speed of 7 knots, or about 1.16 hours, which is 1 hour and 9 minutes. So your revised ETA is your 9 a.m. departure time plus 30 minutes for your first leg plus 1 hour and 9 minutes for your second leg. So your revised ETA is 10.39 a.m. Okay. Now we've calculated both a distance from a time and a time from a distance, each using a known speed. Most often, we'll just get our speed directly from our knot meter, so we may not often need to calculate a speed. But if we wanted to, we could calculate an average speed for this whole trip. We traveled a total of 11 nautical miles in 1 hour and 39 minutes which is 1.65 hours. So our average speed for the whole trip was 11 nautical miles divided by 1.65 hours, which equals 6.66 knots. And that's using the base formula of speed equals distance divided by time, which is miles per hour. Or in the case of marine calculations, nautical miles per hour. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear.